If Tar doesn't come up on this list, I'm leaving Crooked Media. People should not be awarded for impressions of people we have video evidence of. I didn't oh, know they were going to be doing that. I was going to say. I am out of reactions. Today, on a very star studded edition of Checkered Cast, we are revisiting the film careers of Hollywood's biggest stars and blind ranking their top five best performances. This is what I am on earth to do. I'm Louis Fertel. And I'm Hallie Kiefer. Are you excited for this? I'm worried they're gonna throw a movie at us yes. and I'm immediately gonna be like, well, that's the worst thing they ever did. And then I will be acquainted with the fact that they did 25 worst movies. These better be top line movies. Because okay. once we dig in, even say a Tom Hanks, plenty of stuff I haven't watched, I'll be honest. I only watch horror movies. Oh God. Please listen to my podcast, Ruined, on the Crooked Network. Now, before we begin, some rules. For each ranking, our producers will reveal five options one by one. Once we pick the ranking, they're locked in. We don't believe in revisionist history in this game. Let's kick this off. Our first star is Leonardo DiCaprio. I literally just saw Shutter Island last week for the first time. What did you think? It's great. Yeah. Remember the idea of Blood Diamond? Did people really rush out to see that one? Well, I know I did it. Yeah, that's how I Actually, feel. I hope this doesn't come out. Blood Diamond, it's gonna have to be five because I haven't seen it. Much respect to my man, Jaiman Hansu. Let's see what the first movie is. What's Eating oh, Gilbert Grape? Now this okay. was his first Oscar nomination, mm -hmm. 93. He lost to Tommy Lee Jones, which has to hurt because he is such a dick. This is an awesome performance. And it's one of those movies that makes you think, where is this person gonna go? He mm -hmm. is so talented. It's like Jodie Foster in Taxi Driver or something. Mama, stop it now. Stop, mama. He is, of course, playing a mentally disabled person, which I think maybe hasn't aged well. This, I think, is probably in the um, sensitive humanizing versus some other films that famous actors have done, where it's like, well, we shouldn't have done that. That was a bad idea. I want to say four. I think four is good. Yeah, Because okay. it, it's like, it's very impressive he got an Oscar nomination yes. for it, but it's also not definitive Leonardo Ooh. DiCaprio. He obviously He's went on to many iterations after this. Django oh, Unchained, okay. I have bad news for you. Oh. I have said this on the podcast. Okay. I think this is his best performance. Oh, fascinating. I prefer Leonardo DiCaprio being bone chilling. Yeah. You know, I don't like yeah. him being even like anti-heroic in any way. He is unsettling and he was born to be unsettling. <laughs> Don't lay your palm flat on that tabletop! So, let's go too. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this performance. The movie, I don't think about that much. I, I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, next up. Now, no. where does this go? He was obviously, oh. this is like the reason we all went to see the movie, uh, and Kate. Now I will say, as a closeted 12-year-old lesbian, this mm. really hit me hard. This, right, the, the, the haircut first of me. all. Oh, absolutely, between him and, and Kate Winslet, I mean, I didn't know, I, I'm up from down, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here I am, on the grandest ship in the world, having champagne with you fine people. <laughs> I'll take some of that. I have such nostalgia for the movie, but it does that make it his best role. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I feel like it's sort of blurred for me. Obviously this movie was nominated for every Oscar in sight, but not best actor. I want to represent that he should have gotten more credit for you know uh, making the movie a phenomenon. But at the same time, I feel like it'd be crazy to put it above even I, what's eating Gilbert Grape. I agree. He was only getting going. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he really ramped up into his career. Yeah, let's go five. Yeah. We love you. Absolutely. A but you did film. better work. Yes. This is more yes. fun. This is more fun than work for me. See, I would say this is better. Yes, yeah. This is also a prototypical performance of his yes. where it's like, it's a swagger and then Ooh. also like, but what's wrong with him? Exactly. Let's inspect the conscience. I think he also has done maybe better versions of this. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. Yeah. I would say three. Yeah, three is, uh, what do we think is gonna, it, like, I don't is know. The Revenant? Oh, please don't have the beach come up. Remember when we put Tilda Swinton in that? What a crazy Remember idea. They, they, they have a sex scene in it. Yes. I saw it in theaters. Life said, let's put these two people together. And we said, okay. So I think three is good. All right, great. And I'm thrilled, I'm very excited to find out what the last one is. All right, here we go. Is it, is it old up. Rev? It is. All right, okay, all now, right. Now, he stomped to victory with this performance. Mm -hmm. This is him throwing himself into a role. Like, yeah. this is very much like him giving everything. He does have certain roles that he falls back on, and this, to me, feels different in a way that it, it, he was clearly trying to, like, flex and be like, look what else I can do. And also, you know, he's dressed for Burning Man, so it was, like, on trend exactly. at the time. it's perfect. Yeah, he's covered in that alkaline mud. Yes, and they're all dressed like they're in a big Kesha video. I mean, they weren't ready for it. Oh, God bless them. If I had my druthers without the rubric of this list that I would put this at number one, but I'm okay that it ended up at number one. Yes, 
Absolutely. I feel the same way. All right. I think we did a great we job. We did it. You didn't humiliate us. Meryl Streep. All right, okay. Now, where does your history with Meryl Streep begin? I am, um, I'm going to say um, She Devil with uh, Roseanne. Yes, I just want to say, by the way, that I think She Devil is key to understanding Meryl Streep. Absolutely. Because Couldn't that's one of the few movies I can think of where you can picture all these other actresses who could have done that performance, and yet she did it better. Yeah. So it's like Absolutely. you're learning she's, it's like her third skill set to be hilarious, but she's still the best at that, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm very excited. All right, first movie. Kramer vs. Kramer. 1979 Best Picture. She won Best Supporting Actress. This is her second nomination. And Dustin Hoffman wins Best Actor. This is from a time where this was the most popular movie of that year. Wild, yeah. Isn't that zany? Yeah. Just a really difficult divorce. And people were like, absolutely, we right. want to see that. We, with our family, I guess? Yeah. Also about this movie, she has this big courtroom scene, obviously. And she rewrote most of it. She wasn't happy with how the character was written. I'm not saying he doesn't need his father. But I really believe he needs me more. Meryl being like, actually, I'm a screenwriter, She's by the way, a also. I'm gonna put this at two. Two. Let's do it. Okay. Now, oh. the Dravel Wars Prada, if she didn't play this role, would this movie maybe feel a little like an average Disney film? Oh, absolutely. This would be 27 Dresses or something. Yeah. We wouldn't be yeah. talking about this movie. Whoever they cast would have been good, but it would have been like, you put it on when you're home for Thanksgiving. This Certainly. is a incredible comedic performance. She makes the movie. I think something that is key to this performance is there's no screaming. There's yes, no even raising absolutely. her voice. Yeah. I think most actors would have to do that. You're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. I would accept a three. I just need it to be in the upper half. Yeah. I just need it. I th I think it's gonna have to be three. Yeah, that's fine. Even I though that. Even though it could not be any better, there's something about this movie that should be studied where if it comes on, I have to watch the whole thing. It's a perfect comedy film. Death Becomes Her. By the way, I would say Goldie equally as fabulous yes, as Meryl in this movie. I will say the third act falls apart because the problem with this, and this is why it should be rebooted, and I, I, I'm, I'm saying that you should write it, <laughs> you want to have the fun of them in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yes. Undead. You're all runny. I must look ridiculous. No, I don't think anyone will notice. I think it's almost a more important poster than movie. Oh, yeah. This is what I call Hocus Pocus syndrome. Like, people think they remember Hocus Pocus being good. It's like, no, it was the poster. I think you're right. Yeah, like yeah. the visuals stay with us, and then the actual plot, you're like, I kind of don't remember. I think four is fine. She still makes this movie the pseudo classic it is. Yes, yeah. You know, so we have one in five left. Yikes. I know, yikes. I better be seeing Sophie. Aha! All right, well. She won her second Oscar for this, and she stomped a victory. I will say this about this performance. As Roger Ebert said, he said, this is the first accent I've ever encountered that I wanted to hug. And there is a, we, a, a strange vulnerability about her constantly mm -hmm. in this movie that you don't realize is concealing a horrible secret. No child has a more wonderful father and mother and a more beautiful life. I feel like a lot of movies are about quote, quote, trauma, but it's like, this is about how to live knowing that all of us have some version of it. Uh, not like as bad as that one, yeah. but um, yeah. I think this is the signature Meryl Streep performance. I personally have no problem ranking it number one. Is Florence Foster Jenkins left? What's oh, I'm fine with that being at five. Let's uh -huh. hope it's Florence. Ah. Oh, okay. That's certainly That feels fine. That feels absolutely fine. This was not the platform for her skills that, you know, compared to the other projects. Now, I'm an Abba stan, so I mean, the movie is important to me in some regard. As amusing as Meryl is in this movie, she is outclassed by Christine Baranski doing one kick. Yes. Her leg comes up, and I'm telling you, it's like a rock head emerged. Ugh. It makes no sense. It's like, gymnastically, <laughs> it's never been done. I want to do this, but with Christine Baranski movies. Yeah, oh, next time. Next time. Next uh... time. Definitely number five. Yeah. Definitely. We did it, we nailed it. Oh my God, I didn't oh, know they were going to be doing this I was going to say, hit you like a bullet. I. I'm out of reactions. Because I'm going to mess this up. They're going to they're gonna throw things too, at me. It's yeah. too much. Yeah. I'm here with you. I'm here to support you through this. OK, good. I don't know if it's going to help. All right. The first movie is. Oh, oh my starting God. at the top. OK. I've got news for you. This is my least favorite Kate Blanchett performance. I was going to say, this is, I would put <laughs> Never this mind, it's easy. <laughs> I almost feel like people should not uh, be awarded for doing impressions of people we have video evidence of. Yeah, right. They're right there. I, yeah, it's like I, I saw you. I was able to watch recordings and then imitate you like a parrot. I, I it just off. It just she's done better work. Catherine Hepburn was not one of the Animaniacs, and you would not know that watching this movie. <laughs> and am I to expect this behavior to continue after the wedding? What is really bothering you, Kate? She obviously won an Oscar for this. Oscar trivia people know it was like the first time somebody won an Oscar for playing an Oscar-winning actor. Oh, okay. Um, beyond that, I'm so happy we got this one first because it's number five. Five, five of the bullet. Yep. Slay. Absolutely. Okay, next up. 
Okay, now see, you can't just throw the word Carol up on the screen. I'll fall apart. Well, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, as a lesbian, I am sort of oh, yeah. oh. turning on Kate Blanchett for taking all of our best lesbian roles. Yes. But I also can't deny Carol. She is, first of all, the very picture of not just a movie star, but a movie star of any era in oh, this absolutely. movie. Like yes. she is like up Timeless. with the Joan Crawfords and the Jean Tierney's, like all these like legendary buttes of the screen, in addition to being so dramatic and so commanding in this movie, masterful. What a strange girl you are. Why? Flung out of space. Normally I would put this in number one. Tar is better than this. I would say, I think Tar is gonna be on this list. So yeah. how do you feel about that? If I'm gonna put Carol at number two in that case. All right, let's, let's do, do this. It. Yes. Now let me tell you something. I hate this movie, which is oh! crazy because it's Mr. Haynes who also did okay. Carol. She is amazing in it. Yes, I'm, I'm course. There are yes. moments in this kind of vignette of her performance, obviously several different people play Bob Dylan in this movie, mm -hmm. where you are lost in it. You're not just thinking it's Kate Blanchett. This isn't just actor obstacle course. I didn't come out of some cereal box. There's no one out there who's ever gonna be converted by a song. It's not a Kate Blanchett signature role. No, it's more like a special sure. feature. I remember when this coming out, I'm like, I guess I don't have the connection to Bob Dylan a lot of people have. Where I was like, oh, okay, wouldn't, wouldn't have made this or watched this movie, but I support it, obviously. Also, to me, it's weird to use this approach to Bob Dylan because he's not someone yeah. who's gone through metamorphoses in that way. If it were more someone like maybe, I don't know, Elton John or something, yes, where yeah, it's well, like, like about- Yeah, different eras, different looks, yeah. different embodiments, yes, I right. agree. So I'm down with putting this in the four, four space. Great. And of course also it's a supporting performance, so yes. you know it's easier to rank it lower. I trust you. All right, thank you. You actually should in this case. Okay. Now, first of all, Woody Allen, my favorite filmmaker. I'm kidding. Um. Oh yeah, Louis C.K. Mm, yeah. Right. I, I, if Tar doesn't come up on this list, I'm leaving Crooked Media. I was gonna say, it kind of has to at this point. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's how it's gonna work. This performance, staggering at the time, I am friends with fully cynical movie lovers. No and I remember good. my friend Chris texting me, run, don't walk to see this movie. I mean, there you have it. She played Blanche Dubois in The Streetcar Named Desire on Broadway, and we never got that as a movie, but we did get this performance, okay. which is kind of an homage to A Streetcar Named Desire, mm -hmm. in which you get the woman putting on airs, the woman falling apart and trembling, which is a huge oh, part of what Kate Blanchett does. Oh, gotta love the trembling. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not gonna make it if you turn this place into a, a nightclub. I, I, I can't, I can't, right. I can't. All right, I can't. all right. Three sounds good to me. All right, and I am now angry and holding up a Here finger at the camera. Here you we better, go. It better be tar. Lydia, baby, it's, it's your we turn. We gotta come through, it's gotta be tar. Oh, yes! All right, well, there you have it. Thank God. This is weirdly comfort viewing to me. Louis, that makes total sense based on what I know about you. I do remember when Tar came out, it was like a wave of mostly gay men, but like people being like, I don't know if I'm gonna see Tar, and then like the next day being like, you gotta go see Tar. Right. I was like, all right, I appreciate for this kind of movie that reception. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, well, then we're not fucking around here. No. And neither is Kate in this movie. Also, it's one of the few big prestige movies we've had over the past few years that is, I would say, not conventional in any way. There is yeah, not one absolutely. thing about that movie where it's like, oh, that reminds me of this other movie. It lives yes. in this own eerie Kafka-esque zone. You're figuring out who this woman is, how she treats people, the world that she inhabits, the classical music world is so interestingly realized in this movie. I love when she is like conducting or whatever, mm -hmm. and she randomly will call somebody by their German name in the back, and she's like talking, 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 Wilhelm, <laughs> out of nowhere. Zurück zum Anfang und uh, nichts vergessen, Christian. Uh, das Fuzzando. There was a lot of conversation about people's interpretation of certain things. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's, that's what the movie was for. It's one of the few movies I can think of where you had to discuss it afterwards. Like, what exactly, did happen? Yes. You know, another brilliant we ranking. It. Yeah. Tara's number Again, one. Again, it really was your work. I was just here to support, but, um, okay. but we, we did it. Thank you. We're Thank dead you. right. This has been Checkered Cast. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our extreme and sometimes um, embarrassing analyses on my behalf. Have. You were lovely. I humiliated myself. <laughs> but we had a good time doing it. Please tell us who you'd like to see us rank. There's lots of movie stars out there, and I've got news for you. We probably have opinions on all of them. So, no wrong guesses. 